Welcome back to Westmoreland on the Gridiron. Dan Flickinger with you, and it is time to talk with our Week 8 Westmoreland Sports Network Player of the Week. He is Carter Green from the Penn Trafford Warriors, and what a week Carter had against Franklin Regional last week. Three touchdowns through the air, two on the ground in the Warriors' victory over the Panthers. Carter, thank you so much for taking some time out and joining us here tonight. Thank you very much for having me. Carter, let's talk about that performance you had against Franklin Regional. First of all, as a team, because... You look at Franklin Regional, they came in with a lot of momentum coming off of a crazy comeback win against Latrobe, but you guys seem to be peaking at the right time. So what was your mindset going in? And talk about the way that you guys really took the game over early and really took control early of it. Right. So, yeah, um, we knew that they were going to be hot coming in right after that, uh, that crazy comeback win. So we had to go in there. You know, we had to, we had to play our best game. Um, and everyone on the team knew that. So, um, went out there, did what we had to do, and um, momentum started to go our way, and we kept rolling with it. Talk about your performance. Again, you threw three touchdown passes, ran for two more, and I know that you know, you've been working really hard at the passing game since week one. This is your first year quarterback, so it certainly hasn't been easy. Um, but how did the offense play in your eyes against the Panthers? Because it seemed like you guys really, uh, again, you took control of the game early. Right, yeah. Um, I, think, I think we played very well offensively. Obviously, uh, didn't play perfect yet, so we're still looking to play our best game. But, um, yeah, stuff was – everything was clicking for us. Our run game, our pass game was definitely improving. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's very important to us uh, moving to the end of this regular season and into the postseason. Carter, what has been the biggest challenge for you coming in as a first-year starting quarterback? I know the passing game wasn't where you wanted it to be at the beginning of the season. What was the biggest challenge for you, do you think? Um, I think – I think the biggest challenge for me was at the beginning of the season, just getting my confidence, um, you know, getting getting my head clear and just going out and playing uh, without any thoughts running through my mind. Um, that was that was definitely the biggest the biggest thing, and um, I think I think we're to a point where that's been straightened out. So that's definitely good. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, you've been such a tough runner all year. I love to watch you play. Um, and then it seemed like a couple of weeks ago, maybe that gateway game, the passing game, really started clicking. Do you like where it's at right now? Yeah, I do. I do. Um, I definitely think it still needs to keep moving forward, but um, we're, we're at a good point. Now, in terms of running the football, it looks like you've always been a natural, starting with, what, a 99-yard touchdown run against Norwin in the first game of the season, uh, and you've been running the ball hard all year. Is that something that has been um, a weapon of yours to kind of be a dual threat quarterback, even, you know, youth football coming up all, all the way through? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um I've always I've always been a runner, but um, you know it's I, I really gotta give the credit to my line. I mean, a fantastic job this year. They're giving me Kate, you know, any any back in the backfield that touches the ball just that crease that we need to make a big play out of it. So I'm really thankful for those guys. Yeah, those guys have certainly been awesome. So we talk about the offensive side of the ball, but defensively, I mean, you guys have been great all year, and you're a big part of the defense as well. Um, is it tough to play both ways sometimes? And just talk about the defensive play that you guys have had this year, because again, it's been stifling. Right. Um, I think the first game, the first game definitely was tough to play uh, both ways. Mm -hmm. It was it was a hot game. It was about 90 degrees and high humidity. So um, especially acclimating to that first. Um, Full speed football game that was that got a little tough, um, but after that, after that, um, it wasn't that bad. And yeah, we we have a very strong defense. We we play hard. We play together as a team, and yeah, it's worked out great for us. Yeah, you guys have been playing some great football. Do you think you're peaking right now, kind of at the right time? I just feel like um, you're playing your best football when you need to, and maybe better than you were in the first couple weeks of the season. Do you kind of feel that too, as one of the leaders of this team? Right, yeah, I, I, I feel like we're getting close. We're getting close to that piece. Talking right now with our Week 8 Westmoreland Sports Network Player of the Week, Carter Green from the Penn Trafford Warriors. Carter, I'm sure it was an emotional night. I know that you still, well, I, yeah, I guess you did clinch it. You'll have one more playoff game, which is great, or one more home game, I should say, which is great. Um, but you had your last regular season home game. It was senior night for you. What were the emotions like, and um, uh, kind of what was it like enjoying the night with your family and the other seniors? Yeah, um, I mean it was it was tough to think about that last last regular season home game. Um, so that was that was definitely tough, but that really gave us a lot of motiv motivation. Uh, me along with the other seniors to go out and play our best game. So yeah, I have to ask you too what it's like to play for John Ruane. Obviously, a great offensive mind. He's been uh, doing 
huge things at Penn Trafford for over a decade now. What is it like to play for him and, and kind of run his style of offense? It's it, it feels great to play for him. Um, so it's he's an amazing coach. You know, he's he can be tough on you sometimes, but he knows what he's doing and he gets the job done. So it's been it's been a really great three years playing under him. Now you guys go up against the Greater Latrobe Wildcats this Friday. It's interesting too because is this the first time you'll play on a grass field all year? Yes, yes, this will be the first time. Yeah, and I'm sure you guys can't think of that. And if I asked Coach Ruane that, he'd be like, I don't care if it's grass or turf, whatever. Uh, but, right. you know, you're playing on grass. It's probably going to rain on, on Friday night. I mean, is that something that was even discussed or, or you kind of prepare for or you just kind of go out and play football? Um, yeah, he, he just he warned us. He said, be prepared for the conditions. It might be muddy. It's going to be wet. So, you know, just get that out of your head and go play football. There's We, we can't... We can, uh, we can't focus on that. We, we just got to go play our game. So, When you look at the Latrobe Wildcats, what do they like to do um, kind of on defense, I guess we'll say? And uh, what do you guys have to do to come away with a win Friday? Uh, yeah, I mean, defense, they, they play pretty tough. Uh, they have some pretty strong backers back there. So, um, you know, I, we just got to stick to the normal game plan. Um, play our game and we should be okay. Yeah, you certainly want to go into the playoffs with – uh, a lot of momentum, that's for sure. Uh, Carter, I have to ask you, you won't be playing football in college. You will be playing for lacrosse, and you'll be playing for one of the best Division II men's lacrosse teams in the country at Seton Hill University, a team that we've had an opportunity to broadcast uh, in their regional, in their uh, conference championships. Very good team. What um, kind of allowed you to make that decision to attend Seton Hill, and uh, why lacrosse over, I guess, football? Right, so um, so for being lacrosse over football, I, I've, I've played both for a very long time. I've been playing football since I was in kindergarten. I've been playing lacrosse since I was fourth grade. And um, I don't know, it just kind of dawned upon me one day that, hey, I want to take lacrosse to the next level. Um, I, I love them both. I love them both, but lacrosse is the one that I want to take up there. And, um, yeah, I, Seton Hill, it was definitely a great option for me um, with Coach Navani being there great coaching staff um they have a really good team culture and um their their academics at seton hill will really fit what i'm trying to do so it, yeah it was a it was a perfect choice carter uh, what do you think will be the keys to you guys having success in the playoffs what do you think you have to do well to get to your ultimate goal and i'm sure that's heinz field yeah so i think i mean we, we got to keep getting better every week um we got to be able to find these mistakes that we're that we're making correct them and um we, we just got to play together. We, we play our best when we play together, so that's what we're looking forward to doing. Before I let you go, I, I meant to squeeze this in earlier. I have to ask you about the interception return by Zach Tomasovic in the third quarter, early in the third. I mean, not only did he bat the ball up in the air, he intercepted it and went back for a touchdown. To see a defensive lineman do something like that, what was going through your mind? I mean, you guys were absolutely going nuts uh, or at least the guys were on the sidelines, that's for sure. I'm sure the guys on the field were, too. Were you on the field when that happened or not? I was not. No, I was on the sideline. Okay. What, what, but, were you, what, were, what was it like on the sideline? Because I saw, you know, after he scored the touchdown, everyone was just going crazy. Right, yeah. I mean, it was, it was an electric moment, that's for sure. Um, I, was, I was standing on the sidelines, you know. I see the ball go up in the air, and I see him running under it, and he catches that ball, and everyone starts jumping up and down and pushing <laughs> each other. It was, it was great. It was great. Yeah, that's a lot of fun. You guys certainly do a lot of things like that, and it's great to see one of the guys that um, you know probably won't. He may never get into the end zone again unless he's pancaking <laughs> somebody into the end zone, which he might be doing that a lot uh, as well. Right. The the remainder of the season. So Halloween is coming up. Are, are you going as anything? I mean, did you get a costume? Did you design anything? Or are you more focused on football and academics right now? <laughs> uh, yes, I I'm wearing an eighties costume. An eighties costume. Yes. So, what did you go with uh, for the '80s costume? I have a uh, I have a neon pink shirt and some uh, crazy MC Hammer pants, <laughs> and um, yeah, and then I got a blow up boombox. Oh, that's clutch! That sets it off yeah. right there, buddy. <laughs> yeah, no doubt about it. And the student section was rocking their their pink uh, the other night too, and they I were know yeah. how much support they give you. But uh, yeah, that'll be that'll be a lot of fun. Hey, this was great, Carter. I really appreciate it. Uh, good luck the rest of the season. Hopefully we'll talk again. But if not, I'll definitely see you on the Hill plenty of times uh, when you're playing for that great men's lacrosse team. But uh, good luck the rest of the year, and hopefully we'll see you at Heinz. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. That is Carter Green, our Week 8 Westmoreland Sports Network Player of the Week.
Coming up, we'll preview Week 9 games, including the Warriors and the Wildcats, right here on the Westmoreland Sports Network.